this is Monica for Looking for Group. Today I'm here with Troy Chafari, the esports director at Ohio Northern University. How are you doing today, Troy? I'm great. Glad to hear. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. I'm I'm here to learn a little bit more of about ONU's program. So if if you just want to dive right into it, I want to know about the history of the program. Can you tell me about how it got started? Um. It's kind of the same history that I think a lot of schools are going through right now, whereas the administration is seeing that esports is on the rise. Uh, high schools are starting to get it, so obviously colleges should uh, foster it as well. Um, it's a big admissions booster, so I think three years ago they were getting campus visitors that would come onto campus and say, do you have esports? Where's your esports program? Mm -hmm. I like your cat. Thank <laughs> uh, you. Where's your esports program? And uh, we wouldn't have one and then that campus visitor would just be gone mm. and uh so i came in and there's no cat anymore my wife's looking for a cat i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh there was no esports program so they hired me to try to like retain those campus visitors um i had a year to prep the program decide like what it was going to look like what the facilities would look like how scholarship would look and how tryouts would be and all the games we would handle so i had a year to prep that and it was really helpful because I, I needed that prep time because this is it seems like a really easy thing to do but it can get really complicated if you try to handle too much mm -hmm. or don't have the facilities to handle that much so yeah yeah I couldn't agree more it sounds like you had a really calculated plan for this so tell me a little bit about how that plan has developed in creating a competitive environment um, what kind of games are you playing what leagues are you involved in if any and do you have yeah. a casual side as well I, I definitely have a full spectrum program, so competitive and casual side. So let's say there's a League of Legends prospect out there. Uh, he will be a senior. He'll sign up to come here, and he'll be wondering, you know, am I going to make the team? Am I going to get scholarship? I already have that answered for them, kind of, not the making the team part, but the scholarship part. So that incoming freshman would get scholarship regardless of their tryouts. Tryouts is going to determine if they're first string, second string, uh, third string. Third string and on would be gaming club casual. First and second string is esports, and that's what the esports program is. It's just first and second string of all the games we host, which is League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, Rocket League. I'm going to have to look. Rainbow Six, Apex, uh, TFT, um, and Fortnite. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. I think that's all of them. And then I'm adding Magic the Gathering next year, and and I don't, I don't really know what all I'm adding, but I want to I want to have everything, including like FIFA, Madden, Call of Duty. But yeah. it's just inter incremental growth where I, I like I need a console room, I need a I need maybe more PCs. I'm not sure, but COVID's kind of like interrupting things. Yeah, absolutely. That that's interesting that you're have incorporating Magic Magic the Gathering. Um, I noticed across some college campuses, like they'll have their esports and gamers, and then their tabletop gamers and another clubs but you've combined these huh or is it magic yeah, so the, gathering the casual online? it'd be the magic the gathering online because okay, it'd right. be played on the pcs here but i mean in my gaming club i have table toppers dungeons and dragon people oh, that's really uh, awesome. pretty much full spectrum like all types of nerds just coming <laughs> together that's what it's we a big yeah i mean it's a big void space that wasn't represented uh, officially at colleges yeah um usually it was a club you know just a bunch of students but they have a faculty advisor now and like i help provide them with uh annual funding i help them talk with student affairs and student recreation to get this funding um it's probably going to grow as time goes on I, I foresee being there being like a a casual gaming room similar to like a pickup basketball court Very but cool. it'll be a gaming facility that sounds awesome for those future plans. I'm curious about yeah. what the center looks like currently. Can you tell me about the facility now? What kind of equipment you have, the space it's in? Yeah, so I have two land rooms. One land room has 36 PCs in it, and that's like a general uh, practice area. Just uh, it's It has some pitfalls. So one of it would be like in these big land rooms, uh, it gets really noisy. So I have another land room that is like our tournament room and there's less PCs in there. There's only 12. And then I'm going to put a, uh, like a soundproof room kind of similar to like what you'd see, like meeting rooms and libraries have. I'll put another 12 PCs in there. So max out at around 60 PCs in those two rooms by next year, I think. Uh, right now we're at 46. Um, I have a conference room 
that is like a coaching VOD review room, a streaming production area, and just like a lounge for the players when we're not using it. Um, and then I have an office, which is the office I'm in. It's uh, pretty much a PC setup and room for like three or four more, more other PC setups for assistants, student workers. And I probably have like 30 student workers. Oh, wow. Okay. And are they uh, doing things like broadcasting, social media? Can you give me some yeah. examples of the positions? Yeah. So my idea is it's going to be like a resume booster for these guys. A lot of colleges are trying to use the gimmick of we have a esports uh, academic program. So we have like esports management, esports sports management, esports marketing. But really, it's just the same degree and they put a different name on it. So I didn't want to opt into that. I'd rather just, you know, provide opportunities for them to build their resume doing the job mm -hmm. here. Things like commentating. I have five assistants. I have assistants that help with just recruiting or just my day-to-day -day management or ha help me handle like uh, logistics for signing up the games for different conferences and whatnot. Um, and then I have content creators. They're doing like overlays for streams, uh, handling uploads onto YouTube or social media. Um, pretty much just all around esports type stuff. And it's seeming like, because I've only done this for two years now and I've only had a couple graduates, it's seeming like the ones that are doing a degree and also working the job are going to have this be like a uh, a boost to their career getting into mm -hmm. esports, which is awesome. It's like a really fulfilling feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I think having that hands on experience is really important for these mm -hmm. types of things. It's the best way to learn. Couldn't agree more. So, yep. switching gears a little bit here. You know, prospective students watching this interview, um, what can you tell them about ONU's program that would set you apart from the rest that they might be looking at? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a cool question because um, I've had a couple of recruits like uh, be honest with me recently, saying, you know, they applied for a bunch of different schools and they talked to a bunch of different schools. And I'm going to sound like pretentious saying this, but this is like what they said to me. I had a couple of Rocket League guys that are freshmen here. And they said, yeah, I, I went to Illinois Westland. I went to Miami University. I went to Akron University. And it just didn't feel genuine to them. It didn't. It felt like they were being uh, like recruited like a number. They felt like a stat. Kind of like if you've ever lived in a city and you're walking around a ton of people, you're like, oh, man, I, I don't even feel like a person right now. I'm just like mm. a, a guy walking around the city with millions of people. Um, and I try really hard to make it a very genuine, empathetic program. So anything that I think the student would want is the goal of my program. And to say that in a different way, so if you would ask me what the goal of the program is, I'll never have a straight answer for that. It'll be based on what my students are showing me they want. So if I have really competitive students that want to be like the top tier competitive dudes or females, I will foster that. Um, if they want to just have fun and build camaraderie and play at their division and not train super hard, I'll foster that. So. It's always interchanging based on what I see from the students. And I think from what I'm hearing, a lot of other directors don't really let the students lead their program. Yeah. That's what I'm essentially saying. Like I, the, the leadership for the program is kind of like really flat here. I let the students kind of make my decisions for me and I just do the back end work for it. Yeah. A lot of other directors are like, I have this goal. I want to do this. This is what everyone's going to do. Right, right. Instead of, you know, talking with the students and saying, hey, what is it that you guys are really looking for? Yeah, yeah. I feel like the students, it's, it's a tough, tough thing, you know, trusting young professionals, you know, young, younger students to do something, you know, of this volume, but they, they understand how it works. And, you know, it's, it's seeing the value in, in their input is, I think, really important to a successful program. Uh -huh. You definitely, um, you know, that's couldn't agree more. Um, awesome. Sweet. So. For any students who are looking and applying to programs right now, whether specifically at ONU or at other institutions, what is the piece of advice you would leave them as a director in making them stand out as an applicant? Um, that, that's a big question that's been talked about recently, like how to stand out. So my program, you don't really have to stand out. Uh, pretty much, I, you know, You'll come in here, you'll go through admissions, I'll see you're interested in whatever game you're interested in, and I'll put you in a spot that you deserve to be at. So if you're really competitive, you'll probably make first string or second string. If you don't, you have other strings where you can train harder and make it in a later year. Um, but if you're looking for schools and you want to stand out, so 
usually that would be a question for someone that wants to be really high end, maybe like go to a full ride school and maybe they're getting scouted. I don't do that much work into scouting people because my program is like a full spectrum program. But if you're going for like a pure competitive school, which some of these programs do have, you would just want to release like VOD reviews that have you speaking in them, uh, have your comms going, shows your tone of voice. Um, you'd want to look to reach out to these directors. Directors like me, like, yeah, we're busy, but recruiting is a high priority for us. So if you would just email us and say, hey, I want to talk. I want to showcase myself. I want to see if the school's right for me. Uh, that's pretty much all you have to do. It's it's pretty easy to get recruited into esports right now, and it's going to grow exponentially. So we're, we're going to be looking for you guys. Um, yeah, I think that's it with it. It's, it's pretty easy task to get done. Yeah, sweet. And then is there anything about your program that you want to share that maybe I didn't get to ask for in this interview? Uh, man, I wasn't ready to think for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so one thing that I get a lot of people here worrying about is I do cater to like the full spectrum of students. So there's some students that will come in like and be very low rank and they'll still get a chance in tryouts. And sometimes a really high rank player will be in tryouts with them for some reason. And they'll get a sense that the program, you know, because it's full spectrum, it might not be a right fit for them if they're super competitive or if they're not competitive. Uh, I genuinely foster situations to where each string of my team, so like League of Legends, I'll have a varsity team that's at like diamond level. I'll have a JV team that's at like plat or gold level. And then a third string that's like gold or silver. And each of those strings, there's conferences out there where you can compete in. And I pay the registration fee for it. I do everything you need for it. I schedule your times. I put you on times on the PC rooms. And you're going to feel fulfilled. Like, whatever worry that you have of, like, maybe this is too competitive or not competitive. I think I do a good job here. It, you know, you'd have to see it for yourself. But uh, there's probably schools out there where, you know, that's a relevant worry. But I don't think that'd be a worry here. And I think that's the usual biggest worry that these students have outside of, like, their degrees in the school and whatnot. Yeah, am I going to fit in? Right. Yeah. yeah. I think another thing that these students need to start thinking about, cause especially when I talk to young guys, like... Uh, freshmen, sophomore, sometimes juniors, they're so focused on the game and uh, mm -hmm. the game they play in the esports program. You should really get a sense of like the degree you want, the school, like not the, not the, not Ohio Northern University, but like the business department at Ohio Northern, if you're mm -hmm. going for a business degree. So get like a very real sense of like what you think life would be like there uh, and ask those questions. Like once you start thinking about those things, you'll start asking those questions. And uh, that, that's a little bit, I would say, as important, maybe not more important than just the esports program. It, it's going to be dependent on the person looking for the school, but put a little bit more focus on life type stuff. So the school, the degree, the city it's in, the town it's in, if mm -hmm. it's a small town, big town, with the size of the school, all of those things. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's a really good piece of advice to leave off with. Um, cool. Thank you so much for your time today, Troy. Thank you. Happy to do so. Thanks.